Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, we do have another truths or secrets video, which is why I have my little man here in the intro with me. This has become kind of a bit of a tradition here on my channel just to have Harvey say hello and yawn because he's always sleepy. We keep him nice and entertained over here with tons of W-A-L-Ks. I really can't say that word out loud or he's gonna go ballistic. So he gets lots of those, lots of time socializing with other dogs in the neighborhood. So he's literally falling asleep right now, but you say hi, bub. Yes, you're so beautiful. All right, he is literally passed out right beside me on the floor. Poor guy, he is so sleepy. <laughs> but anyways, guys, welcome back to my channel today. Today, we are going to be talking about three secrets about Natasha Denona. You guys seem to really love this series, so this particular brand was very highly requested, especially because I have tested quite a few from her line, so I'm really, really excited to give you my thoughts on all this stuff, and the reason why I do these videos, of course, if you're new to my channel, is so that basically I can provide like a overview review on a certain brand so that we can become better shoppers and we don't waste our money on stuff that's crappy and we spend the money wisely if we choose to invest the money in that brand at all. Now secret number one is pretty common amongst people who love Natasha Denona. If you are a mega fan, you will probably find that these secrets are not secrets to you. But that's okay because these typical videos are really catered to people that are introducing themselves into a brand anyway. So you guys will probably agree with me as well, especially if you're a mega fan and you've tested a lot of things. But secret number one is that there is definitely a little bit of a formula inconsistency at times amongst her brand. In particular, I'm talking about her eyeshadow palettes. This is something that I know a lot of other creators have talked about on their channels where they do feel like they're kind of taking a little bit of a gamble at times when they're purchasing something from Natasha Denona, in particular an eyeshadow palette. So for me, I too have found distinct differences amongst certain palettes. I have found that for instance, a palette with this type of packaging, this is the Lila palette. As you can see, it has a certain type of packaging style Style. This to me has been more consistent across packaging styles. So this one has Sunset, it has Gold, it has Metropolis. All of these have been consistent palettes for the most part. But then you have some inconsistency with some of the palettes that she's decided to put into plastic packaging. So this one is Biba. This is a fantastic palette. Of course, there are some interesting formulas that she has done in Safari, which didn't seem to do well for certain people. And same with the Tropic palette. There's some shades in there that didn't perform as well as others. Whereas this one is standalone amazing. Every single shade in here is amazing. And I do think that if you're looking for like a palette to invest in from the brand, this is one that could really do really well for you just because of how everyday friendly it really is. Lastly, let's get to her mini palettes and her mini palettes are also a little bit of a stretch with kind of consistency, with formula. Some mattes are better than others, some shimmers are better than others. It's really interesting that she seems to decide to change her formula pretty frequently when she creates new products. This is the mini gold and this one is amazing you guys it's the eyeshadow i'm wearing today it is a standalone favorite in the mini category definitely one that i think accompanies the full size gold palette really well and one that i think is worth the money especially because the price point is really affordable for her brand now when you think about mini sunset you guys i decluttered that one because no go man that one was just average if i'm gonna be honest when you're looking for a brand that is supposedly so well known has kind of a reputation of a bomb formula you cannot afford to put out something that is just subpar and for me Mini Sunset was that I didn't try Mini Leela at all, but I'd heard reviews that Mini Leela was very close to Mini Sunset with regards to performance. Same with Mini Star. Mini Star was a little bit better, I think, in between Mini Sunset, Mini Leela perhaps, but those are two that I had just heard from other reviewers and other trusted friends. But Mini Nude is amazing, Mini Gold is amazing, but otherwise, some of the other ones you can really strike out on. 
You really need to trust reviewers on YouTube for this, I think personally, unless you wanna take the gamble yourself. There are lots of us out there that review Natasha Denona that are honest creators, and I do think that it's something to consider if you're looking to purchase one, especially one of these big palettes because these are so expensive. I don't understand why she keeps changing the formula because her original formula, like this palette came before Biba and some of the minis and everything. This is Leela and this is outstanding. Why change a good thing? If it's not broken, why fix it? I don't understand. <laughs> Before we move on to the second secret, there is one thing that's a big strength with her brand, and that is the fact that they are cruelty-free. They do not have any parabens in their eyeshadows, but I do often get questions about ingredients. And the truth is, is that Natasha Denona is not vegan because she has some carmine in some of her shades. Carmine is a red dye, and you guys, I kind of had an idea that it was associated with bugs of some kind, but I only recently Googled it. And I'm gonna show you what actually came up because this is kind of gross. Carmine is made from drying, crushing, and then boiling the bodies of beetles to extract their cuminic acid. Oh my gosh, I think I just threw up in my mouth. I literally had no idea about this and not gonna lie, it kind of grosses me out. All right, now secret number two is the unfortunate truth about her brand and that is that she often does shade redundancy. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is one that irks me to my very core. <laughs> if you are going to be spending money on a palette of the price point of Natasha Denona, in particular, something like Viva, for instance, okay? Like, this one isn't bad for shade redundancy, I'll give her that. For me, I need to have shades that are within the same family but are fairly distinct enough to justify them having their own pan, their own shade name, their own place in a palette because I'm already spending, you know, let's say $150 on this thing. I would hate to have every single shade look the same on the eye. It just doesn't make any sense. Really like give me a five pan palette then with like a similar theme if you're only going to really have like five dominant shades in there and the rest all kind of look the same. Like I said, Biba is not one that is guilty of this, but Metropolis really is. There are two navy blues in this palette, you guys, that look so dang close. It's crazy. So many repeat shades in this one, and this price point is at 170 Canadian dollars. I don't know about you, maybe I'm alone in this. Let me know down below if you think that this is something that's just totally doesn't make any sense or it's just bizarre, but I really want to have every shade to give me a certain kind of theme for sure, but a slightly different look, right? Because what's the point of owning a 10 pan, 12 pan, 15 pan palette when five of those shades look identical on the eye? <laughs> Just for kind of like another thing to look at, this is the Lila palette. Can you see the two that look similar? This one and this one. Now on the palette, this one is slightly cooler. This one is slightly beigier, but again, slight, slight, slight. Now, some of you guys, again, might think not a big deal, two shades, not a big deal. That's okay. But for me, I think I would just like a little bit more variancy on a consistent basis from the brand, just so that she can really ensure that we're spending our money well and we don't have any regret, because that's the biggest thing. If you purchase a palette from her, you spend the money that you do for it, and then you see you can basically get, you know, some similar looks using the same shades, and the shades don't vary too much. In my opinion, it is a bit of a disappointment. This gold palette is yet another example, you guys. Like, how many of these shades look pretty similar? Right? I mean, I'll give her the fact that these two look similar on camera, but in reality, their finishes are very different. This one, this one, this one have very, very slight, slight, slight differences. Now, secret number three has to do with the fact that in my opinion, and I guess potentially my opinion alone, I do feel like her price point is consistently high for, at times, not a consistently quality product. What I'm meaning by that is that if you guys did tune in to my Charlotte Tilbury video, I talked about how she has fairly consistent quality across different types of products. So if you pick up a foundation or if you pick up a powder or an eyeshadow, etc., you will most likely be happy with your purchase because she seems to put 
equal effort across the board when it comes to different parts of her collection of her line. Let's talk about the eyeshadows and kind of push them aside because we already did talk about them, but they are already fairly expensive with some varying consistency and quality. Yes, a lot of other brands do have this where there are some products that just won't be hits for you, but I do think that Natasha Denona often has a big gap when it comes to quality between her products. The Gold Glow Highlight Duo. This is one item, you guys, that had so much glitter, very little pigmentation. It was just glitter on glitter on glitter. But then she has another highlight, like the Super Glow Highlights, which are stunning. Like the difference between them is crazy. One product, the Gold Duo, is terrible. And the other highlighter is stunning. I'm actually wearing the highlight on my cheeks right now. It is just the regular like all over body shimmer or whatever that is the one I have I don't even have the super glow on and it's just so beautiful like I love it this is a product worth investing in but if you do happen to be new to the brand and go like wow this gold highlight duo looks great I've heard great things about her highlighters no <laughs> Another example of this is between her lip products. We do have her liquid lips. I believe they're called the Mark Your Matte or something. They're incredibly matte, incredibly drying, and it's something for me that when I tried it, I was like, wow. Now, I do have to preface that liquid lips are not my favorite thing, but I do have liquid lips from Lawless, from Burberry. I've tried a few of those and I've really, really liked them. Same with the Ofra ones. Those are really nice. And for people that don't like liquid lips, they're manageable. The Natasha one literally felt like cement. It was like chalky and it made me look old, but she has an amazing nude lipstick line. It's called I Need a Nude. And these are different types of lipsticks. They are in tubes and they're not the liquid lipstick type, but they are stunning. They're smooth, they're pigmented. This is what I'm saying. If you pick the wrong type of product within her brand, you can be in for a bit of a surprise. But when you think about other brands, like I said, such as Charlotte Tilbury, yes, she has some misses in her brand, but I feel like the differences between things are smaller versus Natasha Denona where you're like, yes or nay, like really, really bad. If you are a person that doesn't believe that spending X amount of dollars on a Natasha Denona product is good, it's a waste of money to you, etc. despite the fact that some might be good quality and some might not, I would stick to that belief, you guys. If that is something that you truly have, you're going to regret it if you spend that kind of money by peer pressure, persuasion, from watching reviews, let's say, make sure that you're always comfortable with the amount of money because some people, for whatever reason, are more comfortable spending that, other people aren't, and you should really do you because at the end of the day, makeup is a luxury, not a necessity. And if you already feel uncomfortable spending this kind of money on a makeup product, just in general, regardless of whether it's good or bad, you're gonna regret it if you force yourself to do that. So that's just my two cents. I'm coming to you as a fan of her products, the fact that I can find some of her treasures and really enjoy them. And I will also report to you guys whenever things are not so good. <laughs> you guys know that I'm always here for an honest review. So what do you guys think of these three secrets about Natasha Denona? Did you know about them yourself? You probably are a mega fan if you did. Let me know down below if I missed any other secrets. What are your thoughts on the brand? And until my next video, guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys. You and me, everything that we've been through has made us strong You won't believe we've had our great But sorry, there's a light inside of us It shows the way